Okay, we're on the record in cause number DC 1707441, Sting Soccer Group LP versus Texas Soccer Foundation et al. Will all counsel please state their appearances for the record? Mr. Roberts, you are muted. Thank you, <laughs> sorry. Um, uh, this is Rich Roberts for the plaintiff and movement. Lawrence Fishman. Uh, sometimes known as Jerome J. Blas, and with me is my co-counsel, Rick Young. Okay, Mr. Young, uh, we do not see you. Will he be speaking today? Uh, no. Okay. Then or at you. least not to you. Okay. All right, so we are here on plaintiff's motion to show cause and to enforce the judgment. So, Mr. Roberts, it's your motion. You may proceed. Thank you, Honor. Um your Honor, we come, we, we need the court's help. Um, we have filed a motion for show cause. We also filed an amended motion earlier this week. I don't know if Your Honor has seen that, where we basically just laid out some of the things that we requested in our original motion with a little more clarity. Um, as just a brief reminder, I know Your Honor has a busy docket, but just as a brief reminder of this case, this is an old case. Um, we tried it back in 2019. Uh, we sought specific performance of a contract to enforce the sale of a piece of real property, often called the Buckingham property, because it's located up on Buckingham Road in Richardson. Um, the jury agreed with us that there was a contract. The jury agreed that specific performance of that contract was a remedy. The court on September the 19th of 2019 issued a final judgment. That judgment required a number of things most relevant to this particular hearing, the judgment required um, the defendant to execute a number of documents that would effectuate the sale documents. They were the documents that the jury found we'd agreed. It ordered the defendant to provide um, title insurance so that we could be sure of the property that we're buying and the value that we were purchasing. It had ordered attorney's fees and costs of court. They appealed that suit and they lost. The Dallas Court of Appeals agreed with the court's judgment. The Texas Supreme Court likewise refused to issue a writ. All the appeals were exhausted in April of this year, April uh, 1st of 2022. In that time, so while, and they, as a side note, um, we mentioned this in our motion, they failed to file, file a supersedious bond. The court issued a super, ordered a supersedious bond. They didn't like the amount, they appealed it, they lost, and they ultimately entirely failed to comply with this court's order and the appellate court order on that matter. So they've been in contempt of this court's order. They have refused to do anything whatsoever in response to this court's judgment since September 19th. And while they may have had arguably, I won't even give them this, but while they may arguably have had some excuse up until April of this year, they have literally no excuse following April 1 of this year for ignoring this court's judgment because their appeals are exhausted, done. Now, I got to tell you, I've been practicing law for a while and I have never seen as recalcitrant of a judgment debtor as this. And I've represented some judgment debtors. They have done literally nothing and they have refused any of our requests for them to do anything. For example, in the documents that we've submitted to the court, we have a request back in June of 2021 that they comply with the court's order. We suggest that we were going to file a contempt motion back then and they did nothing. They've ignored it. What they have done, as your honor may recall, is they've gone and filed a whole separate lawsuit in the county court at law. They didn't disclose to the court at the time that it was related to this matter. They noticed they notably didn't file it in front of your honor in the district court. They filed it in the county court to try to get away from your honor. And they're looking to enforce rights that directly contradict what the judgment requires. The judgment's very simple. They got to sell us the property. We'll pay for it. They got to issue a title insurance at their cost. And they have done none of those things, none. And they ultimately will refuse to do anything if the court doesn't order them to. And here's how I know that, Your Honor. One, they haven't done anything. And two, they didn't even start looking for title insurance until after we filed our original motion to compel and for sanctions. Attached to their documents um, that they've submitted are a couple of letters where they asked two different title companies to issue title insurance. Both of those came at least a week after we filed this original motion. So despite our demands, despite the court's judgment, despite everything, they will do nothing until we file a motion to hold them in contempt. And I don't expect that to change. 
That's why we're here, Your Honor. We need the court's help to enforce its judgment. Rule of Civil Procedure 308 gives the court broad authority to enforce its judgment. And in fact, it directs the court. The court shall issue orders enforcing its judgment. That's what we're here for. And one of the arguments that they presented in their response, and I expect Mr. Fishman to come up with here later, is court, Your Honor, this, um, this county court matter deals with this dispute over payment. And since we filed it before this motion, then it's the older case. Okay. Well, that's ridiculous on a number of levels. One, the county court case is certainly not older than this case. This is, this is the older case and it has primary, primary jurisdiction. Two, the Dallas Court of Appeals has ruled directly differently. And I can put this language from the case up on the screen if Your Honor would care to see it or I can just read it. Um, just tell me what you had prefer. I'm, I'm good either way. Screen sharing is available. So whatever works for you. Um, I am sharing on the screen. Can your honor see this various opportunities be Sullivan investments case? I can see it. This is a case that we cited in our um, amended motion. This is out of the Dallas Court of Appeals, 1984. This case is very similar to our case. Not exactly the same, but very similar. As your honor can see here on the very first page, it was a suit involving specific performance of a contract to sell real estate. Um, I won't go into the entire procedural history. It's here for your honor, but basically the jury, as in that case agreed, specific performance was ordered for the sale of the real, real estate. This is on the initial appeal. You can see here the, the court issued in that case, the trial court issued orders enforcing um, its judgment. Now, there, in that case, there was a dispute as a part of that contract for sale of real estate. There was a dispute about some improvements that had to be made to the property and what would happen. So they were arguing about this underlying contract. And one of the arguments on appeal was, hey, the court doesn't have the authority to adjudicate those disputes. The Dallas Court of Appeals disagreed. Here at the bottom. Additionally, our courts have held that a decree of specific performance serves to incorporate the party's agreement into the judgment. Thus, the incorporation of the contract into the judgment by reference serves to adjudicate the specific rights set out therein. Future enforcement of contractual rights so incorporated are contemplated by Rule 308. So disputes about the contract, when, our, when it is incorporated into the judgment, according to the Dallas Court of Appeals, 308. That's this court. This is the court with jurisdiction over those disputes. The court goes on. Further, it has been held that the court has inherent authority at any time to direct orders not inconsistent with the adjudication or to make such orders as may be necessary to carry its judgment into execution. Since the judgment sets forth the, the essentials to be accomplished by specific performance with the consequent adjudication of contractual rights incorporated therein, together with the court's prerogatives, both inherently and under 308 to enter such specific orders as necessary, we hold that these points are overruled. So their, their argument that the county court has primary jurisdiction to adjudicate disputes about this contract is just flatly wrong. Dallas Court of Appeals disagrees. Okay, and Mr. Roberts, just for sake of time, because um, we got started late, um, tell me what you want the court, because I know, I know what happened. I know the procedural history of this case. I know sure. we went, we sat through that jury trial for a number of days. I know what the jury ordered and I know what defendants have been doing, appealing, not going to post a bond, appealing me po at requirement post a bond. I get it. What is, what are you asking the court to do? Uh, being that, you know, one of, to me, the, the strongest ways to force a person to do something is the threat of jail, but this, we're dealing with a corporation and that's it. And so what, you know, you know, besides finding them, which is, you know, really kind of the power that I have right now, what else are you asking the court to do today? So we're, we're asking for several things. And one contemplates what your honor is saying. We're asking one for an order from the court, ordering them to execute these documents, to provide the title assurance within 10 days, execute the documents within 20 days, and have those documents executed as of the date that was required in the judgment. So that's an important detail. We're several years down the road now and we have payments to make under this. So we're fine making the payments that we need to make, but it needs to start way back when so that they don't have some claim for other rents or whatever, um, but that we start back then and we're fine with that. 
We contemplate that order because that would be one more order on which a contempt, possibly a criminal contempt sanction, would hang. Um, the judgment is one thing. A direct order from the court is a whole other thing. So we ask for that because they have refused to do it. Um, we ask, in addition, for an order that they either pay us in cash for what is owed under the judgment or that we have a right to offset that against amounts owed. So, so your honor knows we have not been paying rent under for this property because they should, should have sold paying it. paying a mortgage. Yes. Right. We should be paying the mortgage. <laughs> so we, we admit and we are ready to pay. There will be money that we need to pay to them to catch up these payments. Fine. We're asking for an order of the court that those amounts either be paid by them to us in cash or that we have a right to offset what we owe them with those amounts. Very straightforward. It's specifically laid out in the motion. I'll just run through it real quick for your honor. There's $172,595.32 in fees. There's $27,378.56 in interest on those fees. I'm sorry, the cost, repeat the interest. Repeat the interest. Um, 20, I'm sorry, I'm trying to go. I'm sorry if I'm going too fast. Um, $27,378.56. Thank you. We've submitted along with our motion costs, recoverable costs, receipts for those of $6,998.97. And then one other issue, after the judgment, we continue to pay rent on the property for a few months. Now that's rent that should have gone to paying the mortgage, as your honor just mentioned. We asked for that to be offset or paid back to us. That's $53,365. So that's the offset amount. That's what we want to order and, and an offset. And then we've, we're asking for contempt sanctions. We're asking for two types of sanctions. We're asking um, under the Texas government code 2102, it gives your honor the right to get $500 in sanctions. We're asking for $500 per day that they continue to refuse to comply with the court's order. We're asking for our attorney's fees in connection with bringing this action with, with this enforcement. Now they have an objection to attorney's fees and there is some law questioning that, you have to have something that supports it. Uh, we have two arguments in that favor. One, as we just pointed out from the Dallas Court of Appeals, the contract is, is essentially incorporated into the judgment. Their refusal to provide the title insurance is a breach of the contract. Their refusal to execute the documents is a breach of that contract. So your honor has the right to give attorney's fees under the um, Civil Practice and Remedies Code for breach of contract. Also, an award of specific performance is in the way of an injunction. It's not exactly an injunction, but it's essentially a, a, a positive affirmative injunction. And your honor certainly has the right um, to issue attorney's fees as a sanction for refusing to comply with an injunction. So we're asking for our attorney's fees in connection with bringing this proceeding here. We have not submitted uh, final numbers for that yet because it's not final, but we would ask for an order uh, that those be awarded. And then we will submit, hopefully agreed, the amounts of those for the court's um, approval. And then finally, we're asking for further certification. It's been some time since this judgment. They still have not provided a title insurance policy. So we're asking that they certify that there are no new liens or encumbrances since the judgment that they placed on the property. That is an order entirely consistent with the judgment. That is not inconsistent with the judgment. It is well within this court's authority and will promote basically what the judgment is, that they give us this property free and clear of encumbrances, which is part of actually the original documents. So those are our requests, Your Honor. I, they're not outlandish. We are just, we just want to bring, we just want to land the plane. We want to get this thing done. Absolutely. I understand, Mr. Roberts. Okay, Mr. Fishman, you know, what do you have to say? I have a few things to say, Your Honor. First of all, let me clear up uh, a couple of uh, points that I think uh, uh, impact uh, the uh, relief that's being sought. One is the misconception that uh, we had some obligation to post a supersedious bond. Court will recall that you set the bond at an amount that we thought was uh, too high and in fact couldn't meet it. All you did, you didn't order us to post a bond as they say in their pleadings. You just set the bond and it was up to us whether to comply with it or not. So there are no points off for us failing to post the bond, except that, you know, they were entitled to go forward uh, with uh, 
satisfaction to the judgment and and, and, and the court yeah. understands all of okay. that. You don't have to argue those. Um, you know. Okay. All right. Well, let me come. Let me come to another point that uh, I think may be more impactful. One is that uh, the case in the county court at law involving rents and involving uh, the, the uh, implied vendor's lien foreclosure. Uh, the county court at law case is the older case. And the reason for that is that both of those claims arose after the judgment in this court, after the judgment became final. These, these rents and, and uh, mortgage payments didn't exist until then. So it was a whole new case. You didn't have authority. We couldn't file a motion in this court. We couldn't have amended our pleadings after you'd rendered judgment asking for these things uh, that accrued later. So it, it just, uh, it, it's not correct to assert that uh, the county court at law case is the older case. I mean, it's, it's not the older case. Thank you. Well, uh, okay, Mr. Fisher, right, let me move I'm along. Going, I'm not going to argue with you because, I mean, there is an argument that really that case should be abated. A plea to the jurisdiction probably should be, be filed for abatement because we have to deal with my satisfaction of my judgment here before that can even get reached. And certainly this would resolve that case. But again, no, we're not no. let tell me, tell me why I shouldn't give Mr. Roberts what he wants today. Okay. That's really all I want to hear. All right. Well, uh, let's talk about the title commitment first. Uh, uh, we can ask for a title commitment. We've, we've got three. Uh, we've, we're 0 for 2 now. We have a third one out uh, from Allegiance title. Uh, and... Uh, uh, my, the indication is they're probably going to issue the commitment. So I, sh I, I should be able to deliver that fairly shortly. Problem is I can't make them deliver it within 10 days or 20 days. They'll deliver it when they deliver it. Uh, I can ask them to uh, expedite it, but that's all I can do. Uh, if they turn it down, then I've got to go look for another title company. Uh, so, you know, this isn't an easy title to insure. So uh, I'm, uh, uh, I'm working as hard as a mule on this, uh, but uh, I, uh, I'm sure Mr. Roberts would have been empathetic with you maybe back in um, April. But by now, of course, it's, you know, you guys have well, delayed and delayed. Okay. Uh, but the, the point remains, I cannot make a title company issue a title commitment. And if I can't make them do it, you can't make me do it. Uh, you, you simply don't have the power to punish my client for contempt for something that it can't do. Uh, the second point, uh, fully executed, uh, we're to provide them with executed versions of the note and the deed of trust and the deed. Uh, and I don't know how to, uh, again, I don't know how to do that until we've got a title commitment. I can't provide them the note and deed of trust. That's their, that, that, those are their documents, which I should add, they have not tendered in this case and have not, uh, because their tender and our performance are mutually dependent covenants, uh, we don't have to do anything until they tender the note and deed of trust. Uh, and, uh, you know, we talked about the contract being incorporated into the judgment. Okay, fine. That's what the contract calls for, uh, a mutual closing. They haven't tendered anything, offered to tender anything. And in fact, neither of us knows uh, what, uh, what the legal description is going to look like uh, when the day is done until we get a title commitment. Uh, that's... Uh, uh, the, uh, next thing is, uh, the, uh, uh, if you move the dates around, uh, either the dates of execution or the effective date, you are modifying the judgment. The judgment says what it says, and, uh, we're trying to comply with it. Uh, so you can't, uh, uh you have absolutely no jurisdiction 
it, it's not your judgment anymore. It's judgment of the court of appeals. You don't have any right to tinker with it, to change it in any way. You have the right to issue orders to enforce it, but you can't, you can't tinker with it. Uh, next thing I'm going down their proposed order, your honor, that's, that's the order that I'm, uh, proceeding in, uh, they're entitled to, they say they're entitled to about $190,000, uh, in attorney's fees. Well, I don't, I don't disagree with that. The point of the matter is you have no power to force us to pay that amount, uh, even if we had it, uh, because you cannot enforce a money judgment by contempt. It just simply, you can't do it. Uh, and uh, the next thing uh, they talk about offset, uh, that's in the same paragraph three, uh, it, it stings election, sting may offset payments due under the wraparound lien note. Uh, I, I don't know, they may, uh, uh, they uh, sting soccer foundation, who is the, judgment creditor uh, is also the obligor on the wrap note. So that issue is in play. The problem is that issue is in another court, not yours. Uh, the uh, next thing they, they talk about is uh, uh, rents. Uh, and uh, again, those all arose before, after this case was over in your court. And that's an issue that's before the county court at law. Now, uh, the county court at law just is capable of, of reading the judgment and reading uh, uh, the lease and the contract as you are. And because that case arose first, it has the predominant or the dominant jurisdiction. Now, uh, and another point uh, to get down to the merits of that, uh, the rent obligor, Sting Soccer Group, uh, uh, doesn't, it isn't a party to the note. Uh, it, 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 uh, uh, so Sting Soccer Federation can't set off the rents that Sting Soccer Group owes against the note. It just, there, there's no identity of parties. Uh, and uh, that, that doesn't, uh, yeah, that's a prerequisite for set off. Uh, then, uh, uh, they, they, oh, this is something new that they just came up with. They want to offset uh, for the payments that they made under the lease after the judgment. Uh, those were voluntary payments. Uh, you know, we didn't, uh, we didn't uh, go out there uh, with a baseball bat and threaten them. Uh, they made those payments voluntarily. We didn't coerce them in any way. Uh, and uh, volu payments voluntarily made, uh, even under a mistake of law, uh, are not recoverable. So they got nothing there. Uh, okay. Mr. There's, Bush, uh, I'm going to have to wrap up. We got a late start waiting on you, and I've got 11.15 that I've got to move on. Okay, so, i got two more, two sentences, Your Honor. Two sentences, uh, quick. Okay. Uh, one, there's no attorney's fees uh, for, uh, uh, bringing this motion. Uh, the second is that, uh, uh, you can't, uh, their, their requests for no, that we be ordered not to place any liens or encumbrances. Uh, that's again, is modification of the judgment and you can't do that. And that's all we have to say, your honor. Okay. I, you know, I will take this under advisement, but you know, Mr. Fishman, I will say that, um, I certainly hope how this matter has been conducted is on your client and not you, because it just the level of disrespect for the court and the judgment is atrocious in how you you have you are handling this matter. So, you know, hope it's I hope it's from your client and you're just doing your job, but as an officer of the court. I am not pleased with how you have conducted yourself in good faith on this matter. You were allowed your opportunities to appeal. You exhausted your appeals. And now you, you got your chance for a trial before a jury and they gave you a verdict. 
and you or your client are not accepting this verdict. You're not accepting the orders of the Court of Appeals. You're not accepting my orders. It is an atrocious example of behavior by an officer of the court. And if and, and again, I hope it's your client and not you, but I would advise your client to move on. It's time to move on. Let's get this done and um, and, and, and move on. Like, you know, we're, we're wasting time and money and everything trying to fight something. You fought it. You got your opportunity to fight. Now let's move on. I will be granting uh, the motion to enforce. I may just, I may uh, revise some things, Mr. Roberts, but definitely it will be granted. I will give you 14 days to do some compliance and thereafter you will be fined. That amount, I, I, you know, Mr. Roberts said $500 a day. That's actually pretty generous, I think. The court may consider something more. So um, the I will grant your motion to enforce um, some of the particular details I'll take under advisement, Mr. Roberts. Thank you, Arthur. Thank you. Take care of a good rest of your day.